finally, <laughs> we have a beautiful setup uh, for this tubular flow fungi reactor. All right, so here is my next crazy idea. Continuous flow fungi reactor. So <laughs> gonna call it the CFFR because you gotta have a good acronym. This is the most important part of any project. So the idea is to combine the idea of a continuous flow reactor, which essentially um, pumps a fluid, either gas or liquid, through a column of material. So sometimes that material um, only serves to mix uh, two or more reactants, or the material in the reactor can actually be a catalyst, either an enzymatic catalyst or just a chemical catalyst. So for example, you might use a CFR for treatment of contaminated water. So you could have some sort of catalyst material that takes um, the contaminants in the water and neutralizes them or breaks them down in some way and then out the other side of the reactor you get uh, clean water um, either for drinking or for safe disposal. There's other CFRs where again you might have just some sort of material like beads in the reactor to serve as mixing. It will simply mix two reactants together so that you could get a continuous reaction in a volume rather than having a batch reactor. Based on the papers that I've seen, the retention time, which is basically the, or it's sometimes called residence time, the time that it takes that, essentially the time that it takes for that plug to move th through the reactor was 12 hours. So that's a very, very long time, relatively. So anyway, for the CFFR, the idea is to have some media, uh, some sterile media up here, and a tube full of fungi growing on a substrate and then the liquid to move through the fungi and come out the other side. So on the other side it might be waste, it might be some sort of purified water so you could be feeding in some contaminated water or you could be feeding in just you know nutrients or media and then coming out the other side you have your compound of interest you know like a cellulase or um, maybe a different enzyme because fungi are really good at excreting enzymes that is you know their job is to excrete that's how they digest material is they excrete enzymes so for my design what i'm thinking is to fill this tube with some vermiculite maybe a tiny bit of brown rice flour to initially get the fungi to grow once the fungi is established in this reactor then i can run some interesting experiments you know, either with contaminated liquids to see if the compound breaks down, or, you know, I could put just media in and watch the growth of the fungi and then watch what comes out the other side. And I think the most difficult challenge, as with most work with fungi, is going to be keeping everything sterile. There's a lot of different things <laughs> that can go wrong. So I'm going to get to gathering the materials to build this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We got our reactor sort of put together. Um, this will be the drain end. There's a lot more holes in the bottom of this. Uh, and then this is going to be the feed end. There's two tiny holes there. The bottom is hot glued in place for now. The top is just pushed in. I've decided to let the mycelia grow in the tube first before doing any continuous experiments. To do that, I'm going to combine some of this vermiculite which basically separates the grains of mycelia and allows air to flow between them and it allows it to not get too damp. And a little bit of this brown rice flour. So the brown rice flour will provide a little bit of nutrition, but I plan to provide most of the nutrition through the media that's dripped through. In order to keep this sterile, the best thing that I could think of is, you know, spraying the inside of the tube. Oh, there it is. Yeah, with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol something over 65 percent and then just swirling it around letting it sit in there for a while because this doesn't fit in my microwave i don't have an autoclave at all let alone an autoclave this big or a pressure cooker this big so that's the best i can do for the substrate these two combined with a little bit of water i'm going to throw it in the microwave um, for just a very long time maybe five or ten minutes to get it really really hot and hopefully sterilize it and while it's still really hot i'm going to try to put it in the tube and then let it cool in the tube. And then once it's cool, I can then inoculate it with some 
pleurotus ostriatus. All right, so it's been 13 days since I inoculated this tube. So I inoculated the tube on both ends. So this is going to be the bottom, and you can see that the growth is really, really good looking. And then as we move, we see some patches of mycelia in the middle. And then on the other end where I also inoculated it, there's uh, some mycelia, but a lot less than the other. I think what I've decided to do is first run just nutrients through the reactor. So I want to have it set up where I have a retention time of about 12 hours. So methylene blue is used as a biological dye, and it's also used as a food additive. So, um, you know, it's, it's food safe, but more importantly, um, from what I understand, it might be able to be broken down by pleurotus ostriatus, so it would be a good sort of visual indicator to see um, what's going on. All right, so I'm going to get a setup where hopefully I can have a retention time of 12 hours um, with a collection uh, flask at this end, um, and so we'll see what that looks like in a minute. All right, so this is the monstrosity that I've created. So this is upside down right now. The idea is that I flip it over, and then the liquid slowly drips through the tubular, tubular reactor. Um, so as you can see, this is a pretty turquoise. So what I did is I actually drop, added about seven drops of this methylene blue. So I put 30 milliliters of distilled water into one of these tubes, along with 250 milligrams of cephalexin, 250 milligrams of penicillin, and then seven drops of the the methylene blue and so this was sort of my cold you know the the ingredients that couldn't be sterilized couldn't be boiled and then in a different container this container i originally just had 650 milliliters of water and then five grams of brown sugar and i put that in the microwave to boil for like five minutes maybe seven minutes and then i added the cold to the stuff that was autoclaved after this had cooled down all the way and I poured some back and so this will be just a little test to see you know if there is any contamination in the actual broth that was added I used some hot snot to seal the two pieces together and then some uh, name brand duct tape to hold it on so now what I'm gonna do is flip it over and hopefully everything isn't ruined isn't it beautiful? Don't answer that. You know how when you tape people to the wall, as you do, you just like tape them up to the wall and they stay on the wall? That's the idea here. Again, you have this bottle and it's very slowly dripping this liquid down and it's going into this high-tech catch bin right here. It was leaking a little bit, made some adjustments. Now I don't think it's leaking. So I think it's going really, really slowly. And if you actually look in the tube, it's not flooded in the tube. You see the drops of condensation there? It's not flooded in the tube, which is a good sign. That was one of the things I was worried about. I was worried that, you know, um, if a fungus gets too wet, if it's over like 75% humidity, it increases the risk of contamination. I'm gonna let this go overnight. I'll be back shortly. All right, so here's an update on the tubular flow fungi reactor. Remember we fed through this blue solution? We got this on the other side, which I think is really interesting. You know, this is sort of what the broth looked like before I added the dye. So it really seems like the fungi either broke down the dye or absorbed it. The last way I had it set up was a nightmare. It was awful. It fell over. It spilled everywhere. I ran out of duct tape. I spent some time and I built a peristaltic pump. And if I figure out how to do video cards, I'll put it up here, <laughs> me building the peristaltic pump. If it's not up there, I'll put it in the description or just look at my channel. Okay, so here is my setup now. It's not precarious at all. You can see it's blessed by Paul Stamets on the bottom. I've got my agar plates in this box right here. Got some business cards in here. And then a little pump, the peristaltic pump. The broth that I used previously, I stored in the refrigerator and I didn't see any contamination in it, um, but I had to make this hole bigger. So now there's some PVC plastic in here. It's fine, everything's fine. This was sitting in the fridge for, let's see, I did this project 10 days ago, originally. I made this 10 days ago, so you know, 
it might be contaminated, whatever. So this is the inlet and you can see the tube goes almost all the way to the bottom, barely fits. So that's the inlet to the pump, goes around, comes up, 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 up. My roommates love me. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it goes down here and you can see the mycelia is still growing. There's some areas of it that have a lot less but the ends of the tube have a good bit of mycelia. I think it's still growing well. I haven't seen any contamination in the tube over the last 10 days, so that's good. So then it drips down the tube, hopefully pretty slowly, and then it will go into that jar back there so we can compare the colors of the two. The lowest speed that I got with this pump was 10 mils per minute. Now we want a residence time of 12 hours, and I did the math there, and that means we want about 0.4 milliliters per minute. So 10 mils per minute is a lot more. However, we have a much larger pump head, and I talked about this in my peristaltic pump video, but basically we're pumping from a fluid level of here to a fluid level of the end of the tube, essentially. So that head pressure will mean we need to use a higher speed to get a higher pressure on this pump. So hopefully we can get down to about, you know, one drop every rotation which I'm guessing is about one mil or half a mil per minute. We'll see. So let's turn this dude on. There he goes. Let's see if he can pull up the liquid. He's trying. Okay, I'm gonna turn him up. There it goes. Woo! Okay, so I sterilized the tube with isopropyl alcohol too. Okay, I'm gonna slow it down now. Come on, little buddy. You can do it. Okay. Oh yeah, you can see the liquid in there. Good. Okay, that's working. So I might come in here every now and then and adjust the adjust the pump, but um, I think as long as it's flowing, I think it's fine. We'll see what it looks like coming out the other side. I think that would be the most interesting part. And I think finally, <laughs> we have a beautiful setup uh, for this tubular flow fungi reactor. So. You know, I can actually do more experiments later. I was thinking, I really want to try growing like penicillium mold in here and see if we get something that can kill bacteria out the other side. So, you know, a continuous production of penicillin. That would be pretty cool. Penicillin's a little out of date, but the idea of producing a compound uh, continuously is uh, really important to industry from what I know right now. We'll come back when this is all done. Hopefully it takes all day but we'll see, see you in a second. Okay, so everything went fairly well. Uh, you can see this jar is removed here. Uh, that's because the feed rate was a lot faster than I wanted. So what I ended up doing is actually making it a recycle stream. So you can see I'm pulling, you know, liquid from the bottom, putting it back in the top, just running it back through. So what I did was I let it run for about 10 hours and then I've let it rest. And then I ran another, you know, two or three hours and the pump, stopped working. So I need to re-3D print one of the pieces. You can see the little spinny thingy is spinning without spinning the outer spinny thingy. I know that's uh, a little technical, but you know, it's not working anymore. I'm going to let this project rest for a little bit, see if the pleurotus grows through the tube or not, or if it's contaminated. You know, there's a lot of sources of contamination with this open jar here, so we'll see. The other idea I was thinking of is isolating Trimedes versicolor or turkey tail fungus because turkey tail grows really, really fast. You know, if you walk through the woods, at least in the U.S., probably around the world, you'll find turkey tail everywhere. Uh, it's ubiquitous, so, you know, it probably colonizes pretty quickly probably has low risk of contamination and probably breaks down a wide variety of substrates. So it'd be really fun to grow through here and see if it can break down potentially toxic compounds or, you know, simulatory toxic compounds. I think this is a really interesting platform to potentially try out other things in. So hopefully I'll be doing more experiments there. Okay, so here are some comparisons between the, the different broths at different time points, essentially. So this is what the broth looked like beforehand. This is, you know, I think I wrote three hours at 400 mils. Okay, so I put 400 mils through it in a three hour period. And you can see the color difference there, not super obvious. And then this tube here, you can see it's actually pretty clear. I think that's really interesting. 
you know, potentially meaning that any nutrients were in there also came out. Yeah. So you can see the comparison is, is pretty strong. So, you know, the, the fungus potentially broke down this methyl blue compound and potentially broke down the brown sugar that I put in the broth. So finally, this yellow colored one, this is a very slow pass through that I did. I think it took me 15 hours to pass through this volume through the tube. Uh, it was just really, really slow. I had a really jank setup. Um, but I think it's really interesting how much the color changed. Um, and it just got me thinking now, it might have, I might have actually collected some fungal metabolites in here. So, you know, you can ima imagine the mushrooms growing in the tube uh, and they, you know, excrete some proteins to break down their substrate. And I might have collected some of those proteins in this broth here. So I think that's kind of interesting. All right, so that's it for the tube reactor. I'm definitely going to be doing more projects on this. We'll just, we'll, we'll see whatever way it goes, it goes. So anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like the video and subscribe for more crap like this. See ya.